Hi, this is a quick getting started with AWS using the command line interface, the CLI. Now, the video itself is broken into three sections or three parts. So, step one is uh, to install the AWS CLI. And for purposes of um, the installation, I'm going to use a pip install approach. Uh, there are other ways that you can install the CLI, but um, I prefer to use the pip install. Then finally, once uh, we have the CLI installed, the next step is to configure the credentials that we are going to be using uh, for the AWS command line interface. And uh, finally, um, once we've uh, configured the credentials, the next step is to finally uh, focus on the real meat of this video, which is uh, around using the CLI itself. And we'll run some uh, very commonly used and useful commands such as um, uh, the ability to create a bucket, remove buckets, move files between your local computer to uh, S3, how we can browse uh, the S3 buckets, and further to that, some examples of um, uh, some commonly used uh, operations, like if you wanted to view the file content, um, basically operate um, any of these uh, recursively, look at the size of content, etc. So uh, a few tips at the very end. Uh, so that's. Uh, that's a quick breakdown of this video. So let's get started. The first step is to install the AWS CLI. <coughs> and uh, as I pointed out earlier, um, I'm going to be using pip install. So uh, to do pip install, uh, you need to have Python, um, the more recent versions, any of these supported versions, and of course, uh, pip itself. If you don't already have pip, um, you can uh, install it by uh, downloading this Python file and running this command here. Uh, again, you'll find these commands in the description of the video. All right, so let's uh, let's move to the console. Uh, so um, in my case, I already have uh, pip uh, installed. Uh, so I'm going to skip this step here. But if you don't already have pip, uh, make sure that uh, you run this command. And then it's uh, fairly straightforward. Just run uh, pip install AWS CLI. So let me run that here. All right, that's um, that's it for the AWS CLI. Uh, so step one's complete. We've got the CLI installed. A quick way to test it is just to run the AWS uh, command here. AWS and uh, let's hit enter. Yep. So we can see that it's running fine. It will just say help, for example and should get us the help. All right, so that's it for step one. So that's installing the CLI. Uh, the next step is uh, for us to use the AWS uh, and work with S3, uh, we'll be running AWS S3 and whatever commands. But uh, in order for us to do that, uh, like right now, if we tried running it, uh, none of these uh, commands will work like AWS S3 LS because uh, we have not yet uh, configured um, any credentials. Um, so we need to run AWS config, uh, sorry. <coughs> and uh, for that, we need to have some credentials uh, set up. Um, so for that, uh, head over to uh, the AWS um, uh, web console. And under web console, uh, what we need to do is uh, go to the identity and access management, IAM. And uh, let's, uh, under users, let's uh, create a new user. If you already have a user that uh, you want to use, uh, feel free to modify these steps. Uh, so let's create a user, I'm gonna call it demo. And we would like to give it programmatic access so that it has um, the ability to make uh, queries over the CLI and programmatic way. And um, we'll need to add it to a group. If you already have a group, then you could use that group. But uh, let me just uh, show how you can create a group. So let's call it demo. And uh, within that group, we want uh, to grant access policies for S3. So just hit S3 here. So filter it so that we grant it um, full S3 full access. All right. So we now have a group. And uh, finally, yep. Uh, so we are creating a group called demo. Um, and that's in going to be part of a group called demo again. So let's create that user. Yep, all good. 
Um, so now, um, since this is the first time we have created this uh, user, I, we have the opportunity to download a CSV which will uh, contain the access ID uh, as well as the secret key. Uh, of course, uh, as the name suggests, it's secret, so I won't be showing you what that is. Uh, but let me go ahead and um, download um, the, the credentials. So once we have the credentials, uh, the next thing is uh, we need to, uh, let me just open that credentials file. Uh, All right, now that we have this, let's uh, close this and head back over to our console. And let's move on to the, the next step, which is uh, to complete the configuration. Uh, so when, uh, in order to configure the CLI, let's run AWS configure, paste. And basically, it'll prompt you for the AWS access ID, the secret, and um, the geolocation, the default location. Uh, so I'm I'm just entering some values here just uh, to list out all the things that you need to prepare for. So A, um, I'll put format, none, fine. Uh, again, um, this is, um, you'll want to replace these values that I've entered with um, your particular access key, secret key, uh, the region and output. So I'm going to put the actual values here, but I'll uh, skip over that section of the video since uh, that's sensitive information. All right, so now that we've uh, configured um, the AWS um, uh, for the credentials, uh, the next step is uh, to actually um, run some CLI commands. Um, so again, there are ways that, yeah, yeah, I mean, you could opt to run these um, directly using the CLI, or if you prefer uh, to go to uh, the uh, the web console and perform many of these operations, that's fine as well. So again, um, since we have just created it, there's uh, nothing there already. Uh, so let's head over to the CLI, so AWS S3. If you do an LS, it should list all the buckets. Uh, since we have just created this uh, account, uh, there's no buckets already in place. So let's actually uh, go ahead and create a bucket. AWS S3, that's make bucket. And let's call this test. And when following. Oh yeah, uh, it uses a common namespace, so let's, um, let me change that, Melvin test. Yep, uh, all right, so we have just uh, made a bucket. So now if we list, uh, you can see that uh, that's uh, a bucket here. Um, we can also delete the bucket. Uh, let's, uh, to delete a bucket, it's uh, AWS uh, S3 remove bucket S3. Melvin test. All right, so that's to remove a bucket. Um, this, of course, was a case where the bucket was empty, but uh, if you had content uh, um, in there, you could run a force uh, to uh, remove a bucket even if it contained uh, other objects. So let's go ahead and uh, create another bucket. Uh, so make bucket, make bucket, and uh, let's call this demo one. Let's just so that it's unique. All right, so that's the bucket. And so the, uh, now that we have a bucket, uh, we can perform a few operations on the bucket. Um, so let's uh, copy some files uh, to the bucket. So. Let's look at the current folder. So here I have some sample files. So if I wanted to um, move a file over, like say for example, this file here. So that would be AWS S3, uh, copy. Uh, let's paste the local file here. And we need to specify the name of the destination bucket. So that's this guy here. So copy that over and run. All right, so it's um, uploaded the file successfully. So if we list uh, the contents of the 
the bucket right now so let's uh, list change that to ls so this will just list the contents uh, let's clear that screen and run that again so it's just listing the contents uh, within that bucket so again uh, in case of uh, uh, aws uh, most of the commands are similar to um, your uh, linux command so that's ls to list copy move etc um, so the other common uh, command I, I use is to sync folders uh, from my local machine into S3. So again, instead of using copy, for example, I wanted to sync all these files, um, I can run a sync command. So that uses the same syntax instead of ls. Uh, let's do sy and sync. I'm going to copy everything from my local uh, over to uh, the S3 bucket. Uh, so sync is uh, really quick uh, and optimal. It uh, really uh, does it in parallel and breaks the files into chunks before transferring it. So it's really quick. Uh, so on my local hard disk, um, I've got maybe about um, uh, maybe 10, 20 MB. Oh, here, I'm sorry, it's about 8 MB uh, files uh, on my local machine. And you can see that it uh, processes it kind of like in parallel using multiple thread and chunks up the file. So that's a, a quick way to sync files from your local machine uh, into S3. And uh, sync base, uh, intelligently handles that delta. So if files have not been modified and if you run sync again, it's not going to move any of the files. Only uh, if there are delta or changes, so is it going to move the file content. All right, so um, that completed the sync. Uh, you'll notice that it recursively went through all the files and folders. So um, you'll notice at this level, we have a, a couple of files here, and then there were some files within this folder, large files. So you can see that it's uh, actually uploaded all the files. So if I tried running um, the, uh, the command again, uh, you'll notice that uh, it didn't try to move all the files again because there was no changes or no delta. But uh, if I added a new file, uh, test, uh, txt like like so and uh, if i ran sync again uh, it it would just um, upload the deltas or uh, in this particular case i have just one file that i added and no files were modified so it just uh, moves over the delta or syncs up the delta so it's um, very handy to have um, and now that we have uh, synced up the data let's actually uh, look at um, the bucket itself so let's uh, go back to the S3 command, and if we do an ls, you'll notice uh, the files have been synced. Um, a quick uh, tip uh, if you wanted to um, recursively look at um, the folder structure, um, or reality, it's not really a folder. Technically, it's not a folder in S3. S3 really does not have the concept of a folder, though, in many circles. And as I just pointed out, I, I use the reference to a folder, but technically, uh, there's no folder concept in S3. Essentially, it's uh, just a key. Um, so it's not really a folder. So if I wanted to recursively look at the data, that's uh, recursive. Um, so you can actually see that uh, we can recursively look at all the keys within that bucket. Uh, so uh, again, if you're using uh, f uh, uh, a, a browsing system, uh, like through the, uh, I'm sorry, if you use a GUI tool, many GUI tools uh, typically show uh, S3 like a folder structure, but it's basically just keys here. Uh, similar to um, recursive for listing, if you wanted to get rid of the files, uh, you can just run rm here, which I'll show you possibly towards the end once we've gone through most of the demo. Um, on occasions, uh, I, I'd like to see the content of the file. Uh, unfortunately, AWS uh, S3 does not have a cat command uh, to view the contents of the file. So a quick trick is, uh, like as an example, if you wanted to um, just view the content of that one particular file, uh, demo one, let's paste that back here. Um, what we can do is uh, we can run a copy command, but 
but uh, instead of copying uh, to a local folder, we'll just put a dash here, and that will output the contents uh, to the terminal here. So that's just a quick uh, tip uh, in, in if you wanted to view the contents of the file. Um, the other common thing which uh, uh, you'll want to do is look at the file size um, of the bucket and again since the AWS S3 CLI doesn't directly have uh, the ability to uh, view the uh, the size of uh, content uh, uh, quick tip uh, and you'll find this in the description of the video is uh, you can uh, use um, pipe that into uh, AWK awk, and do a quick um, lookup so uh, in uh, just give me a second, AWS, oh, sorry. Um, let me change the name of that bucket. So that was mal when demo one. So here, what we're doing is um, using uh, Arc to uh, give us um, rough size of that content. So again, it's quite expressive. So it's basically taking the size of every individual file. So the, if you just do uh, an AWS S3 LS, so like this. Basically, it's taking the third column, that's first, second, and third column, which is the size. So we are totaling up uh, all the individual file sizes. And uh, since it's recursive, uh, we get a list of all the files in that bucket. So that's just a really quick tip to help you browse and navigate um, uh, CLI. Last command I'll show you before we wrap up is if you wanted to delete contents from uh, a bucket, um, let's say we wanted to delete pretty much everything. You can run recursive here so that it basically wipes out um, all the contents uh, from uh, this particular bucket here. So that's uh, just a quick um, set of uh, useful commands that you can run uh, when working with S3. So in this uh, quick video, we have gone through the process of installing uh, the CLI, um, how we can configure to use uh, a credential account. And then finally, um, how you can uh, run some qui uh, very useful or common functions uh, using the AWS CLI. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks again for watching.